Welcome back to the Way Podcast, where we talk about Yahweh and how to live life his way. If you don't know who I am, my name is Victoria, and I have two friends with me today. <laughs> Y'all can talk. Okay. Yay, we're allowed to talk. <laughs> I'm like so excited. I can't get words out. Like, <laughs> oh my god. My name's Sarah Wiggins. <laughs> If, you, name, if he can't, oh, I'm Katie. Yeah. <laughs> um, y'all, before we get into today's episode, please like and subscribe on YouTube and leave me five stars on whatever podcasting platform you're listening on. And let's get right into today's episode. I'm impressed you can talk so fast. I mean, it's not a surprise, but. I know, it's, it's like impressive. seeing you in this light is just so fun. I don't I understand why. Literally, Jerry and I am listening the same thing. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. let's paint the picture. Because we all work together, and Victoria comes in, and she's either like really happy or she's mad. <laughs> That's she comes, not true. And she, and she comes in with her tote bag. And she just is like, "Hey guys," and like it's just like but this is like where you belong, you know? Yeah, you're like this is where you like. I think you don't you're thriving. No, I get it. Sorry, I'm already messing up. Like this is your this is your this is your element there. Your element. It is. Your element. It is. Yeah. I love doing this. Um, okay, y'all. Who's here? Who are these people? No one knows who y'all are because y'all are new guests, mm -hmm. which is so yeah. exciting. So y'all, this is Katie and Sarah. We work together at our job. Anyways, yeah, so we work together and we work at an advertising agency here in Atlanta, Georgia. Me and Katie are on the social team together and uh, Sarah, What's girl, I forgot your name. What's her name? <laughs> Okay, no, it's fine. Like, I'm okay. Sarah um, is an amazing graphic designer. Graphic um, designer, yes. Actually, a new title is brand designer. Thank you. Oh, that's right. Um, it's very niche. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, she's... Oh, also, y'all, I know y'all saw the new cover art. Sarah actually did that for me. I did it. A few months ago. Mm -hmm. When I did have my whole brand refresh, Sarah was behind it all. I really asked her, because in her last art cover, she had, like, a choker on, and I was like, how old is this? And she is... <laughs> I'm like, you have a choker on and it's velvet. I zoomed in. It's a velvet choker. It's most Sarah! definitely 2017. Why are you roasting me? No, I just keep you, you know. The fine. one the one thing about Sarah is she will tell you when when you need 1, something. Yo, when you need updating you so or you rude. need. Don't ever talk to me ever again. Love you. Love me. Anyways, actually you can leave. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, the questions. We're gonna play who's most likely to. Do you wanna read you wanna read them? Honestly, you can because okay. I don't want to be surprised. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, I chose okay. them. So. So we're gonna close our eyes on point after you like read, and then we'll open our eyes and see, and then we'll communicate oh, okay. with okay. them. So okay. Like a game, you know. Okay. Sorry. Can we point to ourselves? Yeah, I do that all the time. Okay. 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 You ready? Mm -hmm. Wait, I'm like closing my eyes to read the question. That's silly. Who is most likely to marry someone rich and famous? Okay. Okay. Can we? Open open your eyes? Eyes? Okay, 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 okay. Me and Katie have had so many no, conversations. At myself. <laughs> Me and Katie have had so many conversations about this at work. About us being with just like famous rich men. So that's why I did both yeah. of us. Who would you point to? Both. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because y'all like can handle like the spotlight. For sure. Or I guess. I don't know if that's probably cool for me to say. Okay. Anyways. Yeah. 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 I agree. Okay. Well, agree. Katie's like, I know. I was like, please, <laughs> please. <laughs> What's the um, next one? Oh. Who is most likely to start a rumor? Three, two, one. We knew. Oh, oh, a hundred percent. Okay, I put myself, and I'm very self-aware. So. <laughs> okay. <Love. laughs> um, who is most likely to die first in a horror film? Three, two, one. I was also thinking Victoria. Why are you at me? I don't know. I don't, actually, I didn't mind. Um, I think it's because you can be very intimidating. I feel like the killer would just want to get rid of you first. Because oh. you talk your way out of it. Okay, what? I will literally fight and kill him. That's what I'm saying. So he has to all your energy on you first. So you're... I'm gone. I'm gone. Who did I point to? Oh, Sarah. Oh, absolutely. No, Sarah, I, say one more thing. You'd be like, boom. I'm gonna take me. I'm gonna, like, I would love <laughs> boom. I, I would love to be in heaven. Okay, this one has a little bit to do with work. Okay. <gasps> kind of. Okay. Who is most likely to lie on their resume? Three, two, one. Ah! One thousand percent. <laughs> we all pointed to Sarah, y'all. <laughs> and I think honestly, I'm very pro 
fibbing on a resume. I mean, me too, but I feel like... I'd be like, I can uh, you'd speak be like, Chinese. i graphic designer for Haley, Haley Baldwin. Yeah, I yeah. love Haley. You'd say, here, here's the design I designed. She just never used it. <laughs> thousand percent i'm screaming anyways uh, y'all i didn't i didn't mean to choose all questions that we pointed at sarah for no i mean I, okay. I'm, I'm okay no i'm fine she's a big girl so again we all work together um it's been so fun we wanted the first thing we wanted to talk about is the workplace and just being christians in the workplace balancing work life things of that nature and yeah but okay I do want to preface this and say me, Sarah and Katie are very lucky to work at the workplace that we work. And so it's just like much easier for us to balance work life mm -hmm. than others. And so we do want y'all to know that we are coming from <clears throat> that angle of, we know that, you know, we're kind of on the lucky side of the spectrum when it comes to the workplace. Um, and yeah, so we don't want to be insensitive to anyone who, works five days a week in the office and stress crying every day you know it's it's hard out here we know that but we're coming from an angle we work two two days in the in the office three days at home we have a hybrid workplace we have truly we have the best bosses like we love them they're like one of the girls they're so easy <laughs> to talk to so easy to get along with like so we're lucky we know that but anyways what do y'all have to say about balancing work life work Balance. Work what? life what life it? work work. Yeah. Work what is life balance. Work life balance. Yeah. You got it? it? Yeah. Okay. I have a long answer, but I just cut it. Talk slow. Hi. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I people will tell you like, oh my God, like post grad, like it's really hard. But like it is hard. And when I tell you, shout out to my therapist Kelly. It took me probably two years to fully get down how to manage my life and work life just because school is so different like you're just always thinking about grades and college is fun with your girls but like I feel like with work it's such a different dynamic because like when I met y'all like I didn't know what was too much or what was too little and like mm. I think it's just a balance of knowing that you are enough and that your boss has hired you for a reason and to not think otherwise and like if I'm telling you this, like, it's not going to be instant. Like, when I tell you, I had to practice this for, like, almost two years to fully, mm -hmm. like, get in the pattern of actually practicing it. Like, it's not, like, an easy fix. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it's hard. And I would also, I would also say, too, I, so I started my year anniversary at our agency just passed in July. And from when I started from now, I have seen the biggest difference in Sarah. Like she, oh, a hundred percent. Like the way she has grown, not only in her faith, but just in everything. Like it's almost like two different people from when I started till now. That's yeah. what Kelly says, my therapist. <laughs> oh, I'm like, who is Kelly? Therapist. <laughs> therapist. Love her. But yeah, I've like actively seen her like work on it and yeah, go miles in it, and so yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think it's such a like testament to the fact that it is something that you have to almost like work at having the work-life balance like it's not just like a because like when you get into your job and you know it's overwhelming and there's a lot on your shoulders it's almost like our instinct to like work till eight or nine mm -hmm. you know like especially in the beginning to, to, prove, to yourself. prove yourself and to you know you're stressed out you feel like everything has to get done right in that moment and so it's almost like such a mind thing that you have to to just be like wait it's okay for it to be tomorrow like yeah mm -hmm. or like really just focusing on making sure that your priority is work when you're at work and not work when you're not at work and did that make sense yes yeah okay um yeah that's definitely something that I've had to teach myself too especially in college when you have all the time in the world and you can do mm -hmm. like in college I was doing homework at 11 o'clock at night like I was going to start studying okay. at like 10 30 at night mm -hmm. and now when you're like in the confines of like eight hour days 
it's hard to like stay productive and then you're like oh yeah I can just get on my laptop at 10 o'clock and I'm guilty because I still do this but no um <laughs> oh my gosh y'all I literally open my laptop at random times and my slack is still open and I see Katie's green dot no. I'm like Katie get off of the computer literally Katie get off <laughs> I promise I'm I do work on it but it's definitely an adjustment especially if you're talking about from college to mm-hmm nine to five and just finding time to like work out or finding the energy to work out yeah or to hang out with friends like it's just it's It's a a lot lot. lot. and like i like finding girls or gals guys like in your work setting is so huge like when i first started y'all weren't there and i just can't imagine like y'all yeah not there and i think having i think especially having friends who aren't on your direct team is really nice. Like yeah. They're they're break together, obviously, but we don't really work a lot together. And so I feel like that's kind of nice to where like if I'm really stressed about something, they have no idea what's going on. I can hang out with them, and we can not talk about yeah. the big project going on. I can just talk yeah. to y'all about Netflix reality show, yeah. like yeah. something like that. It's been really like loose and or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I think. Like, God puts people in your life for a reason. I definitely, like, I literally always put Katie and Victoria, like, in my devotional. Because, like, they, oh, like, same. two have been, like, stagnant in my life. Or, like, it's Don't just... Don't you cry, Sarah. No, it's true. <laughs> like, you have been so stagnant and, like, pushed me. And, like, I think that, like, with girls in post-grad, like, finding people that, like, are with you. Like, I don't know why people are like, oh, my God, don't make friends with your work friends. Like, you should. I was just about to say, that is actually one thing I had to unlearn as an adult. Sure. I feel like growing up, everyone always said, like, don't make friends with your work friends, like set boundaries, like don't hang out with them on the weekend, like don't be yeah. don't be in relationship like with them. And when yeah. I started working as an adult post grad, I'm like, that is literally counter the gospel. Like that's yeah. counter yeah. what Jesus did. Like he was in relationship with everyone. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so that's one thing I had to unlearn. I'm like, no, and then it just made it easier that I love y'all so much. Y'all I talk about mm-hmm how much I love all of my coworkers so much. Like, it's not even funny, but like, I do love y'all so much. And it's just like, how would it be for me to walk into a workplace and not have a relationship with y'all? Yeah. That would, yeah. That would stink. I think one thing that I keep thinking while we're talking about this, not to like flip to the other side, but like, I keep thinking about the people who don't have that. And like, what do you tell them? Like, cause like we said, we, we are lucky with the people yeah. that we work with and, I don't think there's anyone in the office that I can say, like, if I had to spend an hour with them outside of work, like, I would be miserable. Like, I would enjoy spending time with anyone outside of work. Um, So, but I do know that there's so many people out there who are just, like, in their office and they're like, oh, my gosh, I have no one. Like, Yeah, and if you don't like it, quit. Like, normalize quitting. Okay, like, that's, <laughs> that might not be the answer. That's not where I was like, going. If you're miserable, if you're miserable like, quit. <laughs> Chipotle has a great <laughs> No, but like, if you're not happy, it's okay. But I'm no, not, I, I not, do agree. Maybe not that, like, they're not happy, but, like, they walked into work, like, it's their first week, and they're like, oh, gosh, uh, who yeah. do I get close to? Or who, oh, Lord. You know, like, it's just, like, overwhelming. Overwhelming. Or, like, yeah. Ours, like, everyone was so friendly. Everyone's like, hi, mm-hmm. like, let's set up, a, set up a meeting to, like, get to know each other. Yeah. And, like, I feel like some places aren't like that. Like, yeah. And for sure, like, especially, like, girls who are, like, nurses, like, I don't know how that dynamic goes as far as, like, breaks. I know it's just so high stress. And, again, like, we have a very casual, like, office place. Mm-hmm. But so I think that even, you know, one of my good friends works at Pima as a nurse, um, labor and delivery nurse. And just, like, I remember when she first, you know, started working there, she was miserable. I mean, understaffed, like, the whole shebang. Yeah. And, like, I now I hear her she's been it for a year now and i can hear more of her being like oh i have a girlfriend i have two girlfriends and i feel like i've seen the light in her kind of come up even though she's exhausted i do think that like again like finding that one person like to just like hang on to is so so crucial Mm -hmm. yeah but yeah i also wanted to uh sorry i don't know my phone just vibrated i also wanted to uh talk about being christian in the workplace i think um for some i think that's a little bit harder than to do than others but again we are coming from a place of like 
I'm making it literally sound like we work in like the promised land, but no, like, we have our we have our ups and our downs. Like we, we, we don't do. Work it's in. not perfect. It's yeah. not perfect by any means, for but sure. um, I feel like in in a more stricter workplace, it could be harder. Mm-hmm. Whereas for us, like we have different places where we can go sit and go talk and like outside on our patio and stuff like that. But I do think um, being a Christian in the workplace post grad, it it can be hard especially if you're not in a christian workplace Mm -hmm. um i uh, i was talking to somebody it it might have been nick recently shout out nikki nick love you nikki Nikki, we're watching you love you nick you better watch this nikki love you (laughs) um but i was talking to him about like being a light and i think it's just so easy to go into your workplace and just be 10 toes down, like in your computer, head down all day, headphones in. But like, I think when you are that way, you miss opportunities to show the light of Jesus. Like that light is shown in regular conversation or when you can just relate to somebody on a dumb Netflix reality show, just talk to someone and be human. You know, I just think you have to find that balance of learning how to work (laughs) hard and doing your work, but also knowing when to just you know take a 10 minute walk to get coffee and walk. just yeah. talk you know what i'm saying well, what's your break on that Love. i also think like i was thinking about this earlier but um i think it also depends on like who you are on how sure. how you bring jesus i think jesus gives us all like essentially like our whole goal as christians is to love other people and and show them Jesus. And I think the special thing about each person is that they get to do it in a different way and in a unique Mm. way. And like the way that Victoria talks about Jesus in the office is different than the way that I like that Jesus works through me in the office. So I just think that like, that's something to think about too. Like if you're, if your way to show other people in your office, Jesus is wearing bright colors and showing up every day smiling and buying someone coffee and just being that like what people think of as light or like happy and peppy and something like that that's great do your thing people will be attracted to that and eventually that definitely ain't me by the way they will (laughs) (laughs) like i said before (laughs) you haven't cut it out sorry go on (laughs) um then that that's great do you and Jesus will work through that. Um, but if your way is more, I feel like I'm a little bit more like calm and I just show, I just have relationship with people. And at any point that I see fit or if I, I think I do, like my goal in the office and out of the office is always to have relationship with people so that they, they trust me and that I trust them and you know, through that they see Jesus and they feel loved by Jesus. And I don't ever like, I'm not that kind of person who's going to scream it at the top of my lungs or anything, but I still think that the point gets across and it gets across to the right people um, when they need it. But then like Victoria is very like much more, you know, the first day she came in and we knew she was a Christian because she started talking about it and not in a annoying way at all or not in a we organic yeah in a very like organic and natural yeah. way but I will never it was forget, just different I'll never forget because my nails were green and I had just got back from church yes, camp I remember and you in your pink dress yes my pink dress and <laughs> my green that. nails yes and they, someone asked me about my nails I was like yeah it's from church camp like literally that was yeah first thing literally her first office. sentence <laughs> yeah oh, yeah so funny oh wait we should all do our first impressions of each other our first Let's impressions yeah. Yeah. okay yeah okay <laughs> right now are we still going on Wait, about our conversation your, your statement i think yeah i think i'm pretty much done okay, okay. yeah i'm going first okay katie since she was the first egg to hatch okay she's the first one to come you know before me. um katie i thought she was so shy and yeah all my girlfriends we are not shy shout out auburn girls um and so i was like you and this girl are not gonna vibe and ironically my best best friend <laughs> You were her little at oh, Georgia. Oh, that's right. And so I texted Lauren, shout out Lauren, 
Sorry, all the shout-outs. Hey, Lauren. Um, no. So I, I text Lauren. I go, do you know Katie Stone? And she's like, yeah, she was my she's my, my, my little. Until I dropped out of. Yeah, but, like, honestly, I kind of love that you dropped. Um, <laughs> and so I, like, was like, okay, like, she has to be cool because she was Lauren's little. And so I would say it wasn't, like, probably three months until, like, no, two months till I was like, okay, like I can tell you all my secrets. Okay. It that's wasn't fair. like a full on like when I first no, met that's you, like fair. here's my social security number. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know? Yeah. So, but then I was yeah, like, yeah. I love you. I think we really bonded at the Christmas party. 1000%. Because that was about three months into my, into my time. Maybe it was two months then I got to know you better. Yeah. I, I don't know what it was. It was a slow burn. Because you usually yeah. like, I meet someone and I'm like, I love you. Yeah, I feel like that's how it's I am with a lot of people. It's a slow burn, so I just brought you into my slow burn. No, like you, you had honestly to calm me down. Oh, good. It's like I'm Adderall, you're Prozac. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, hey, Victoria, my turn. Wait, my turn. I'm gonna do Katie. Okay. I I remember. I remember. I I remember the first day I started and having conversations with you. I feel like with both of y'all though. It was kind of like a slow burn. Like, my first impression was you were quiet. I, I thought you were cool from day one. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, she's cool, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think it just, it just over time, like, I just kept, I, I, I told you you're an onion. And I just keep seeing layers and layers and layers, layers of you as yeah. we continue to work together. <laughs> and so the way that I see you now was not my first impression of you. But my first impression of you wasn't bad. It's just that I'm just learning so much about you as we keep going. Yeah. You know? I'm also mm-hmm. very, like, reserved when I first, like, meet people. So it's, like, I'm not going to give people 100%. Yeah. So, like, I, I, can't get I feel like, I feel like not many people, like, right after meeting me are like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's a slow burn. Yeah. Which slow is good. That builds that deep relationship. That, it does. Like, it does. That, like, there's you can't either, get other ways. Truly, yeah. we're the opposite ends of the spectrum. Like, there's either yeah, yeah, yeah. there's me. <laughs> no, yeah. we are all so opposite. Like, I've never, yeah. like, three girls put in a little bowl. We are all so opposite. 100%. Yeah. No, it's so true. But we love each other. <laughs> it works. Three peas in a pot. Somehow. Which is crazy. It does. Hot tip. What was my first impression of Sarah? <laughs> oh, God. Depressed. I, I was depressed. My I was about to yeah. say, Sarah. Again, you yeah. are completely different now than you were when I first met. No, you. I was like severely depressed when I met my. Mom. And I remember when we first met, there were a lot of tears. We were all. Oh, going, I cried we every were day. All going through it when Victoria. Yeah, I cried every day. Yeah, and that's why but I was so. Sarah I remember definitely. when I started, I was so confused because I didn't know what was going on, but I just knew people were like, were just going through the ringer. Yeah. And I didn't know if it was work. I didn't know if it was life because again, I didn't know anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. but. There was, there's never been a moment where I didn't like look at you and like, not like you or not like, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think in the beginning I felt a little bit more bad for you. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> but <laughs> in, in like not a mean way, it was just no, like, you is she me. okay? Like I was yeah. concerned. I was not yeah. okay. <laughs> no, like shout out to Kelly once again. Thank you. My therapist. Yeah. Um, no. Honestly, where Kelly at? Let's give her a mic. When I tell you. She needs one. Yeah. Kelly. It's like you, but she's probably like forty-five. She's a little bit you. Like I need she it. has I all need these Kelly's daughters. Number. Like she's no Kelly is amazing. She can't cross contaminate because we have a relationship. Dang. So I have Kelly to myself. Dang. But Sorry. yeah, I've always loved you. But it was it, again like the Sarah I know now was not the, my first impression For of sure. you. Growth. I was so depressed. Hundred percent. Love yeah. it. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what my first impression of Sarah was. I think I wasn't depressed when I met you. You, <laughs> the fact that that's your like marker of time. Yeah, is there, <laughs> you no, were, I you oh, were, a whole other you were about, about to. It was right before you like went into it though. Depression. Yeah, um, yeah, it was. But I'm trying to think because oh. I remember, like I told you this the other day, but when I was applying to, um, our company and, like, saw your picture on the, website yeah. or on Instagram or LinkedIn yeah. or something, I was like, oh my gosh, this girl looks so cute and fun. And then um, I got there and the depression you were, hit. No, no, like your my first day was very overwhelming. So I honestly don't remember Honestly-o. like a lot of people. Mm-hmm. But you were just a, like you lot. were your full self. And I was Love. like, oh, my gosh. I was She's like, gonna this girl is going to be a lot. <laughs> no, like if I were to meet me separately, I'd be like, oh, my God. I feel that way, too. I'm like people from the outside looking at me. I'm like, this girl. No, I understand. I can yeah. OK, first question of Victoria <clears throat> or. Okay, yeah. yeah. So when I met her, I was again, I was really depressed. And so, but all I have to say, 
whatever. But I do think that you came in at the perfect time for me because I was like probably at my lowest point when I met you. No. I what was when it, what month did you come on? July. It was like the last week of July, twenty twenty three. So right. we said July because July is my worst month by yeah. far. Like yeah. depression wise, it was the worst month. Oh. And so oh. I am like again, like I literally write my devotional at church. I write K and V on top of it just because like like they're just always in my mind. Yo, R, stop you crying. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cry, Sarah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's true i think like i remember i remember one day you were like can we go on a walk i want mean, to walk because you're talking about like dating and it's, oh so like, i know exactly what boy i was talking about yes, yes. About dating and i was i think i was going on a walk we came back and then you came in you just parked your car and i just started crying on the couch and i think you you might have started tearing up a little bit. You definitely did. But I was falling crying. I do remember this. Do you remember <clears throat> this? And did, did, and you asked to go to the car. Yes. Because yes. I was crying. Yes. Yes. I do I remember, remember this. Because I, I think yeah. I went to the car with you. Yeah. Love. But again, like, again, like, I can't imagine, like, crying not having them. But that would stink. Yeah. At a workplace. Sorry. Whatever. But. Victoria, have you cried at work? <laughs> this is no. not where I was wanting this No, I've to never go. cried at work. I think it's raw. It's real. on. Why were you terrified of me? I think it's because, like, I knew what you were probably going to say to me, and I wasn't ready to hear it. What was I going to say? What, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Probably just, like, in July, like, I was probably, I'm not going to cry, but I was probably, like, the lowest I've ever been, and, like, just, like, hearing you being, like, a light in my life, like, I just, like, wasn't ready to, like, I, like, loved being in that place with, like, darkness for so uh, long. That's where you're comfortable. Sarah, wait, I'm literally getting teary eyed. <laughs> Okay. I like like I feel like once you're depressed, like it like because I remember I was depressed when I was 12 or 10 because I had this thing called pandas, and it's depression in kids. Um, I was so you basically it's an autoimmune disease, and I still have pandas, and um, it's it's, it's very new, and so put your mic closer to your mouth. It's it's a very new thing, and so when I was 10 and got pandas. I was getting strep a lot, and that strep causes a depression when it comes to pandas. Mm -hmm. And so I got my tonsils out. What? Yeah, so I, I didn't get, but I was like seeing things when I was little. Like I've I heard about that. I was seeing, and there was a little boy in Atlanta who literally called himself, and he was a senior in high you school. You were seeing things with pandas? Yeah, so pandas, it, it, no, it's. Pandas it's, is the name of the disease. disease. I've never heard of this. It, it's really new. So I had it, and also my best friend had it, Rachel, um, when she was my age exactly, which is so crazy. But, but so it happens in kids and so it is autoimmune disease and so I, I had strep probably like 15 times in a year and so I got tonsils out and then that got rid of the pandas and so the past two years I basically had these migraines and so what we're kind of thinking is it's kind of just with pandas kind of flaring up again and so with pandas it's like severe depression but all that to say is that when I was talking to her in July, like in my mind, like I knew how hard it is to get out of that state. I was just so tired of being miserable for at that point it was for a year. I didn't want to get out of it because I knew how much work it was to get up. Basically. That's so sad in that. Yeah. Like, like you just saying that I think makes people who don't, maybe suffer from depression understand a little bit more of those yeah. who do and like when people do hurt themselves or whatever like yeah people who are f no like not no, suffering literally. that or like how why would they do that that's so selfish mm -hmm. and it's like just you saying that being like for them it's harder to work their way out than it is yeah. to just like stay there or mm -hmm. you know whatever it's so interesting yeah like I've Marina. never, I've never thought never about knew. it like that. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy, but I'm here. It's no, up. literally, I was telling someone this the other day, not to make this like the Sarah show. No, it always is but the Sarah show. <laughs> <laughs> I was, like I came here, kind of doesn't. I was telling someone the other day, like I can't remember when it was. It was a couple months ago. I think it was one time when you came over to like watch The Bachelor or something. Mm -hmm. 
And I like heard you laugh for the first time since I had known you. Like really like <laughs> belly laugh. And I was like, <clears throat> I literally was like, oh my God, like she's getting better. Like it was like you, almost where like you didn't realize like how bad you were until I yeah. was like, oh my God, I've literally never heard Sarah like laugh like that. Oh. And now you laugh like that all the time. Oh, and I'm going to cry so happy. hard with your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sweet. See, wait, I'm oh. crying. I'm getting emotional. <laughs> <laughs> but again, like, I just like want to reiterate, like, I was the happiest person alive. You still before are. This. I still am. But I'm just saying, like, I just can't iterate enough, like, how hard no. that, and I'm, I'm not better fully, like, I'm still working on it, but... I just can't reiterate, like, the most beautiful, funny person, woman, man that you know has problems. 100%. And I know people are like, that's always what we say. But it's really true. And I feel like it's... it's so true. You have to remind of it every day. Because y- you get... Your, your mind... And they didn't learn in therapy that your mind is so, so powerful. Yeah. And doctors can only do so much. Can you talk a little bit more about that journey and Jesus and your faith? Mm-hmm. Okay. I like to say... But past two years, y'all counted this yesterday. I've been to over 30 doctors mm. to figure out my migraine situation. I've had migraines for two years, on and off. I don't think I've been to the doctor in two years. No, I've been to I 30. I just went for the first time <gasps> I need to go. Years. No, Victoria texted me. She's like, is it is it $30 for PT? I'm like, oh my God, you're fine. Anyways, so. Uh, <laughs> Sarah! Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, so I will say, though, it got to a point where every doctor is telling me I'm fine. And I got so frustrated. It, when I tell you, I literally was so mad at God. I remember I told you this. I was ticked off. And I I think it was, like, I don't want to. I made them a couple months ago. When I literally was like, I have to surrender it. Like, I don't know what else to do. Like, when I tell you, God is the only person that can give me answers right now. Because all these 30 doctors are giving me nothing. And so I had to find my comfort in that. And I think not finding comfort is anything like with anxiety, like with, when like you get anxious, like you take deep breaths or you have this emergency pill you take maybe. Like I had to make God my emergency pill. Like I just had to be like, okay, this is my back pocket. I have this in case I need it. Well, not because I need it. You know what I mean? You have them all the time. But like to really lean on, like stop, like, that's the only reason, like, I feel like I got through what I got through. And I'm still going through, but we're better. Yeah. But, yeah. And again, like, Katie and Victoria were, like, my little beams. My little bean babies. That's so nice. I didn't know I was beam. You are bam. You are bam. I love that. Oh, my God, beams. Our new group chat name. Um, I have, like, similar experience. Not as, like, serious, but definitely, like, like very sure, clear times when jesus like brought me out of the Mm -hmm. similar thing and like college i feel like college is rough like the beginning of college is Mm -hmm. rough for everyone but um i was extremely anxious depressed like when i tell you i went to probably one class a week like i was skipping class because i didn't want to get out of bed like it was horrible Definitely not to the level that you were at. But, no, do not, but similar. There. Do not diminish what you went through. But similar, you know, crying all the time, like, at, you know, hurting the people around me, acting out, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. Um, and literally, like, still signed up to go. Do you know how we do, like, the spring break, like, mission trips in, in college, like, no, through your ministry or whatever? <laughs> well, did that. <laughs> Um, and it was just kind of crazy because I did it at a time where I was like drinking and partying and doing all these things and not okay. And then I just was like, let me go on this mission Mission trip. trip. It was my second time going. Like I was going as a leader, which is even crazier that I like thought that was okay. (laughs) But it, I think God planned it out so perfectly. And every time I look back, I think about it because we went on that mission trip and while we were on the mission trip COVID started happening and so when we got back from we were in jamaica the whole world shut down like we Mm -hmm. left to go to jamaica and it was a normal world we came back and the airport was empty like it was kind of creepy but 
it was That's such scary. a moment of like and i i honestly feel bad saying it sometimes when i am telling like my story because covid was so bad for so many people and i have people that you know are still being extremely negatively affected from covid but covid genuinely like saved my life because god like if i had to stay in college to finish out sophomore mm-hmm. year i don't think i would have made it i would have dropped out of school genuinely or i don't know what would have happened but god literally just like picked me up and like here here's a break like i think so many people in the world like needed a break at that time Mm -hmm. and like so me just realizing that he did that and him just like being like okay you literally have nothing else to focus Mm -hmm. on but me and like being with your family and like Mm -hmm. it literally saved me and and healed me to the point where i was able to go back to school and i mean like my family doesn't even know how bad i got i think but I went back to school junior year and like my new roommates and the new, the people I met that year, a hundred thousand percent, like 180 from like sophomore year mm-hmm. to junior year. And my sorority people that. <laughs> and I till I die. <laughs> um, but I think it's just interesting. Like God will show you when you are like, at the point where you're Mm -hmm. like I literally don't think I can do anything else like Mm -hmm. and he's gonna say "Ooh, like remember me you know like he'll find a way to like make his way to you like it's crazy I just feel like everyone who doesn't know Jesus needs to hear that because I feel like there's so many people who just are so turned off by the the thought of following God Mm -hmm. thinking that it's just like it honestly for selfish reasons like I can't become a Christian because Jesus I can't do xyz I can't do this anymore but it's so much deeper than that like God literally saved all three of us you know in different Mm -hmm. ways but found us literally when we were at the lowest point that we possibly could be and he picked us up and showed us just the best the grace the mercy and just how much he loves us when we were honestly could so easily look at ourselves and be like we are not worthy of that love 100 mm-hmm. percent. i just got full body chills because that entire like year mm-hmm. my whole thing and i told so many people this was like i just don't feel worthy i don't feel worthy i don't feel yeah. like why what like i just don't feel like anyone could love me like anyone anyone and yeah it's it's not true it's not true it's not true at all like literally think about yourself at the worst point of your life the lowest you can go and think about jesus just literally putting his hand out and being like okay my girl let's go we're going from here you know like he he, it's just like touching the the people with leprosy in the bible like those are people where every society thought they were disgusting like with nowhere near them and Jesus was the only one that would go to them and touch them and not only touch them and pick them up, but he healed them of it. They would be clean of, of leprosy. Like yeah. we, that is the type of God that we serve. Who cares if you, whatever aren't the Bible says, don't get drunk or whatever, who cares? Like, that's just not important at all. Like God is just so much more complex than the things that you can't do. It's that he loves you and wants to reel you in. And all three of us are literally walking testimonies Mm -hmm. of God saving our lives. And that's why like, we're not quiet about it. Like we want everyone to just feel what we felt and be saved the way that we've been saved. It just bothers Mm -hmm. me when I think about so many people are missing out on this goodness because of just almost misconceptions they have about Jesus. Yeah. I remember I told you, we're watching Love is Blind downstairs in your apartment, but we're talking about something and I made the analogy, you you said it was a good one, so I'm going to say it right now, that, okay, so, like, God, imagine God is in a salt pepper shaker, just a salt shaker, and, like, everyone's focusing on this one little piece of salt that, like, is, like, maybe it's, you can't get drunk, maybe it's, like, you can't. But people just focus like like like, guys, guys. Say, like stealing or yeah stealing you know, whatever killing. it is yes the adultery people, adultery yeah. people focus on just like the things like 
that are just like like the fun hot topics that are good to bring up in a little debate with someone who's not a Christian maybe. 100%. When yeah. it's like you are missing out on all the salt. Yeah. Yeah. And no, salt and it salts and everything. Yeah. Hundred so percent. I think one thing I always think about or what talking about this, so I was like, there's so many like rules in mm-hmm. Christianity or whatever. And it's like I used to see them the same way. Like I used to be like, Well, you know, I'm still gonna go and drink, like whatever, you know, like it's hard to follow the rules, but once you get to the point where you know Jesus and you love Jesus and you love you're just so like it's not even rules any like it's not even like hard because you're not like it's like a way of life. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's like it's like I'm trying to make it in a more like material comparison, but like when you just like really like trust someone and love someone like you're n- you're not going to go against them not because they tell you not to mm-hmm. but because you're n- you're not going to do that to like hurt their feeling like 100%. Yeah. And not saying that I never obviously I'm human I I do but For sure we all do. It's just like you ha- you just have to change that like mindset from like oh, these are rules that I have to follow in order to love God. Mm-hmm. When in reverse, it's like, I love God, so I don't want to do any of these things mm-hmm. because I mm-hmm. love God so much, and, like, he's showing me a whole other... Yeah, 100%. He's opening, like, a and whole other world. you can have fun. You can have fun. Oh, so much fun. Like, oh, whatever, don't debate about me again, but I... <laughs> I have stopped drinking. I'm probably, like, a year sober. I had a white call in February. Um, uh, Sarah! I know, I'm sorry. Okay, it was a wedding. It was fun. Good. Okay, I had w- one white claw. Okay? Script me, whatever. Anyway, so I, I've been sober, pretty much sober for almost two years in January. And I love drinking, y'all. I loved it. I love going to bars. I love going to hang out in Auburn. And I think, honestly, part of my whole journey with this migraine, depression saga I've been on is kind of God being like, Sarah, you need to cool it. I think that one of the things God put in my life is like, Sarah, like, you just need to cool it because it's not good for my health, obviously, drinking. But I think going on this, like, sober stint the past two years has been super enlightening and, like, just thinking about how much time I have now has been crazy. And being sober is not easy, okay? When it's like hanging out with friends and everyone drinking. Drinking is everywhere. I, um, what you were saying a little bit, uh, I looked up the verse. It's Romans 2, 4, I think, where it says kindness leads to repentance. Mm-hmm. And what you were saying about, like, when you love Jesus and you just trust him, like, you not, you're not going to do wrong, not because he's not saying it. It's just because you love him. And it's truly like, that is what the Bible says. Kindness does lead us to repentance. And then what you were saying about the drinking, they know my story. I mean, if you don't, go listen to my testimony episode. But I mean, a homegirl was drunk every night, you know? Wait, you were? Wait, I haven't listened to this episode. Oh, it's my very first podcast episode. My testimony episode. I've been going backwards. Oh, yeah. I need to go listen to it. But anyways, um... I, and I realized, like, when I was drinking every night and partying at the bars, too, girl, in college, doing yeah. all the things, mm-hmm. I didn't even enjoy it. I'm like, yeah. why am I doing this? For Like, genuinely, mm-hmm. it was just conforming to the ways of the world. Okay, question. So when you were drinking, did you have, like, an intrusive thought every time you were drinking? Like, did you have a goal? Or, like, did you have, like, oh, I want to I was drinking end- for boys. Victoria, literally, I was asking me that because I was the same thing. I was searching I was on the prowl. <laughs> no, there was this one guy, shout out Bleep, but I was obsessed bleep. with him. I was obsessed. And through therapy, shout out Kelly, I found out that I love to chase things that I don't need in my life. And he was a person that I didn't need in my life. Um, and I was obsessed. I wrote dissertations on this boy. And I will tell you, about two years ago, I ran into him at a party and I had my current boyfriend, William, shout out William, with me. And like the way he came to me and he goes, how'd you know I was here? I go, you thought I was trying to look for you? In that moment, y'all, I gained every ounce of confidence back. I was like, you little. And like, I was like, that was God. That was God being like, do you know how many tears I cried over this boy in college? And I'm like, boop. I, I hate that guy. Would, would be looking. 
looking for for guys men at the bars. And for sure, too. It would. I feel like most girls are. Is that a thing? hundred oh. percent. Yes. So. I okay, think so. You're drinking to get me. Okay, that's the goal. Some girls are like, I'm here, I have a good time, party with a the girl. They say that, but that's not mm-hmm. truly why they're that's there. So true. And and literally, like, you're drinking to get men, and and when you're drunk, like, it lessens the the dagger of what you're doing, like. Yeah, you don't feel it. Like, like risk it's just it all. It's never gonna yeah. lead to anything good. It's as, never, as I learned, and I learned that I didn't. To learn. I do get flashbacks from like my party days when mm-hmm. I'm in the bar. There's just one boy that I see in my head <gasps> that is just like ew. Like everyone has one boy. There's nothing. Everyone that, has one. There's no time in my drinking partying days where I think back on a boy and I'm proud of it. I, some of them were cute, but. But I'm like, no, my eye was cute. No, I'm like, oh, oh, what was I doing? Like, it's just instant regret. Yeah. But it's just, oh, you had to drink to lessen. That's why I didn't have the intrusive thoughts. Because I was drinking to literally turn my thoughts off. Oh, my God. Yeah. This is like, y'all, I love how we all have the same problems. <laughs> no, literally. Just in different fonts, but all the same. 1,000%. Yeah. And, like, oh, I just love it. Because, like, you know, like, when you see something happen and it's, like, years in the making and you're like, that's God? Yeah. Like, that's so sick. <laughs> so like, sick. I love. That's the name of the podcast. Sick. The name yeah. of this episode. Yeah. That's so sick. And but like, I, can we just, while we're on the topic, can we talk about drinking just a little bit more? Love to. Let's talk to the college girlies. You know, school's starting up. Let's talk oh. to them, okay? What what do we have to say about the alcohol and the men and the, and the choices we make mm-hmm. as little 18, 19 year old little girlies who didn't know any better? I just want to go back and hug me. Girl, you didn't have to do it. You know? You know and like, think it's about really it. We were in college. I feel like social media wasn't as big as it is now. For sure. Like, I would have been canceled. <laughs> you would have been. I would have been. <laughs> shut up. I- Victoria's gonna have a lot of editing time. I am, girl. Why don't you make me go? As 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 I'm talking into like. It's <laughs> gonna be so cut up. <sighs> um, to the to the young girls in college, the that is a hard one. Um, I guess. So it's a hard question. Like, I know. I think it's I like, like to like. like your girlfriends like are your college at least for me it was like having girls there and like i would look at my left limb to get back to college as far as like the drinking goes it is like it's like i feel like a course in college like everyone does it and so i think it's all about knowing your body and like knowing your limits if you want to drink you can drink but i think there's always a fine line it is just make sure that like if I was telling my younger sisters or any like talking to someone like literally right in front of me I would be like make sure before anything else that like you know yourself and you know your motives and mm. yes I think it's so much deeper than just like drinking like oh a hundred percent obviously but as 17 18 19 year olds we don't know or we're just looped in in the in the the fun of it all is a group yeah but i would just say it's okay to say it's okay to just do what you want to to not do it even if everyone else is doing it it's okay to go out with your friends and only have one drink and you know be the caretaker that was me sometimes sometimes it wasn't me but uh okay most of the time it wasn't me, but most um, times it was me. <laughs> I just think it's so important to like know yourself, know like I just want people to make good decisions. Like I don't want you to have to get to to I mean, I'm only twenty four, but get to twenty four and look back at college and be like, I really wish I hadn't have done that or like Ugh. I really wish that I hadn't have done that. Though. I hurt no. you know, I feel like I hurt a lot of people's feelings. I made a lot of very stupid decisions that just aren't part of my character and it always was because my priorities were elsewhere yeah and i wasn't Mm -hmm. um i just don't want no reg no i don't want anyone to to look back and be like that's always my advice even to myself now is like okay in 10 years what are you gonna be proud of in 10 years what are you gonna look back and like be glad that you did Mm -hmm. or like if you're making a decision in 10 years is your 
you know, are you going to thank yourself for doing this? Mm -hmm. And so I just think do that, you know? Yeah. And like looking back in college, like I don't remember the drunk nights because I was drunk. Okay. I feel like the moments that I cherish and remember the most are the ones that were like just hanging out, going to dinner, like studying together. And I do think a tricky part actually had to tell my good friend this. I'm not kidding. Two months ago is she kept sending me old videos of me being drunk and like when I tell you being sober two years is not easy and I went through a lot of times when I was super have I had a lot of FOMO and I literally had to tell her I love you to death you're my best friend in the world I just can't look at that stuff right now yeah because I was in a place where I was just getting I was trying to get better I love those times it was hilarious but again like it just didn't serve me now. And it took me, I'm, I think I told her probably three times. And I think she got it the last time because I started crying the last time I told her. I was like, please stop. <laughs> but oh I think. Turn your mic around. Oh, set, like setting boundaries for yourself and not being afraid to vocalize what you need in that moment in your, in your life when something is so normalized like drinking. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say all of that. I think one, I know we hear this and I never use this as an excuse to drink, but Jesus drank wine, y'all. Like I understand going learn. to college and maybe wanting to drink whatever, but I do think like it's just never wise to go past your limits. It's never wise to be drunk. It it never leads to good decisions. The Bible literally, literally says to stay sober minded because the enemy is prowling around like a, a roaring lion. Like that's scripture. And we made, we're literally walking testaments of making all of our worst decisions being drunk. Like yeah. it's, yeah. It, that is, it just gives the enemy such an easy way to control you. Um, and so I would just, I would, y'all just, you don't need it. It's not necessary. It's okay to drink one, a drink or two, whatever. But again, we're also all here saying the same thing. Like we wish we could not think back on that time and regret things and like, just be like, why did we do like, just literally thinking about why we did what we did. Like if we can keep y'all uh, avoid y'all from doing that, then like, please just listen to us. Like we're not speaking from a squeaky clean past of, Oh my gosh, we were just perfect. No, baby, we did it all. And we did it all. We're here on the other side and none of us are proud of anything. No. <laughs> and so if no. we can stop y'all from doing those things, just listen to us. I'm telling you, you are better off because of it. Yeah. Um Stan. But also, y'all, I just really want y'all to hear that you don't need the alcohol to have fun. Like, again, I've said this before. I have had so much more fun as a Christian than I ever had being drunk every night like that it's not necessary y'all and you remember it huh and you remember and it. and you remember it and it's just such a a type of fun that i cannot um express y'all like it's just such a full fun like you go home and your cup is so filled and it's just like oh my yeah, god instead of empty because you didn't bring home the boy right y'all cut that leave part out the boys at the bar y'all do not go home with anybody i repeat do not go home with anyone you will regret it it's yeah. just not good it is not good. I do want to say one thing. Like, I think it kind of goes off what I was saying earlier, but I just like, I have like such a heart for people who are like hearing this and they're going to do it anyways. You know? <laughs> yeah. 1,000. Per- if or I like, was 18? Not, not even, not even people who are hearing this, but like, or who are still going through it or still struggling with it. Cause like, even sometimes I do, like, you know, it's just, it's not like a, a straight path to, to growth i just like never want people to wrap their like worth up in the drinking or in the partying like and i think if you get that piece right then you probably won't want to do it that much because i think that Mm -hmm. was like my issue yeah but i just think that is such a big part of it and i don't i just like my heart breaks for just the people who like wake up the next day and are just regretful so sad and like just like is this is this like all that that (sighs) you know you just feel so empty and like yeah i just don't want but i don't want anyone to feel like shame for doing it if you do do it so it's just like yeah just know that even if you do you can have boundaries we're we're not encouraging it but like just know that like no matter what like God still loves you no matter what you're doing Mm -hmm. because I think that was like I would 
<clears throat> I strayed so far from God because I thought like I don't want him to even like look at me with all the the yeah. stuff that like I just didn't even want to like kind of like you like I didn't even want to acknowledge it mm-hmm. because because it was so hard and so shameful and so like so I, yeah. I just don't want people to feel that like yeah. yeah you're gonna go to college the truth is you're probably gonna go out probably. you're probably gonna, you're probably gonna mess up like you're three, gonna four, mess up that's what 20, you do that 30 is times. what you do but i just mm-hmm. never want it to come to the point where people are like i've messed up so much god doesn't love me anymore because like 100%. that's not no. true like 100 i just don't want that to to get twisted there is nothing you can do to make God not love you or to make him run away from you. Mm-hmm. I, this is the best advice. And this is advice I give a lot when I, I led a group of girls at my church for a few years, but I always tell them, cause you know, it's young professional women in their early twenties. They made all these mistakes. And I would always tell them like, when you mess up, if you go home from the bar with the boy, the next morning run to Jesus. Like mm-hmm. he don't think that, what you are doing is making God look at you like, ew, I can't even No, God's still standing there with his arms open. Like run to me, my daughter, whenever you are sinning or whenever you're in a sin cycle, you feel like you can't break. Yeah. I feel like our flesh wants to run away from God naturally, but literally we should do the opposite. We should run to him in our sin because it's not us that is going to wipe the sin clean. It's Jesus and his blood that wipes his sin clean. So we need him more than ever when we're in these pits and when we're waking up, waking up the next day having to do the walk of shame. Oh my goodness, bro. Don't even get uh, started. Oh. I'm like literally having flashbacks. Like I oh my can't. Oh call it Victoria. No, it's horrible, bro. But also... I literally have to like picture Jesus like sitting right next to me just like with the most nicest face. Yeah. Like I literally have to like imagine like when I'm in like really low points, I literally imagine oh. him like sitting right next to me and I just feel like so comforted. That's why I like the chosen and like Jesus yes. revolution. It, I feel it like it gave me like a yes. Yeah. Redeeming love. love. The chosen. Redeeming love. <laughs> Anyways, um yeah, y'all. That we're gonna wrap it up because we're we're going long. Oh my but, god, no! I know it's so fun. I can, I we can, can literally sit here. I can talk. Talk. say I can keep going, but no, like our podcast is about work. We talked about like work. How do we get to drinking? Day. Probably, I don't know. I just things. love y'all's testimony. Like truly, I was holding back tears, hearing just how Jesus mm. plucked y'all out of the mucky muck. <laughs> Anyways, y'all, mm. thank y'all for coming over and coming on. I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave. <laughs> No, like, Sarah, I feel like we're going to go viral. And if you want us next week, comment down below. Okay, they, they will. Oh, wait, shout out Katie Sweeney. She told me she was praying for us, that she's really excited for us in the episode. Katie, shout yes. out Katie Sweeney. We love you, girl. Hearts up. Wait, do you, no. wait how do you make a heart? How do, how do I do a heart? Literally. I don't know how the Gen Z, I'm saying Gen Z like I'm not Gen Z. I don't know how they do it. You're, you're No, I'm a Gen Z. I'm right at the end of Gen Z. What year you born? What year? 97. I've 90. looked this up many times because I didn't want to be Gen, Gen Z. Gen Z. <laughs> I didn't want to yeah. be Gen Z. Yeah. Katie, we yeah. love you, girl. She's one of our coworkers. We love Katie Sweeney. Katie Sweeney. Yeah. Um, I could let talk for hours. I know. Sorry. What I'm else do I want to talk about? I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> y'all have to go to bed. We have to. Oh, well. You don't have to work tomorrow. I, I do because I didn't Me finish, I didn't finish the work. content calendar for 8,000. Anyways. Oh. And that's That'll be quick. Yeah. Y'all, I, I'm usually asleep by 9 o'clock. I'm like feeling kind of crazy. I know. Um, anyways, Bye, y'all, guys. this is the end of the episode. Uh, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, remember Jesus loves you, even if you're a drinker, but we don't want you to drink and regret your decisions in five years. Uh, anyways, um, love y'all like, and subscribe. Leave you guys stars. I'll talk to y'all next week. Bye.